So welcome back and today we're going to look at pH indicators and this is for the Leaving Certificate Edition 20. So indicators, what is an indicator? An indicator is a substance that undergoes a distinct observable change when conditions in its solution change. This could be a color change, this could be a precipitate formation, this could be the release of a gas such as CO2. So there are a number of indicators for different types of reactions. But what we want to look at in particular today is a pH indicator. And a pH indicator changes color over a narrow range of pH values in solution. pH indicators are typically weak acids bases. They change color when the pH of a solution in which they are present is changed. And acid base indicators are often one color in an acid and a different color in a base. So a pH indicator is suitable for a particular titration if the indicator changes color completely inside the range of pH change experienced for that particular titration at the end. So just to give you an idea of some type of pH indicators we could use, here I have, for example, methyl orange. It will change within the pH range of 3.1 to 4.4. In an acid, it will be red, and in a base, it will be yellow. Methyl red, pH range 4.2 to 6.3. In an acid, it's red. In a base, it's yellow. So its color changes from red to yellow. Litmus has a pH range of 4.5 to 8.3. And it goes from red in an acid to blue in a base. Phenolphthalein, 8.2 to 10. And it goes from clear to pink in an acid to a base. Phenol red, 6.6 to 8, and it goes from a yellow to a red. So indicators are used in acid-base titrations. Just to remind you what a titration is. A titration is a technique where a known concentration is used to determine an unknown concentration. Typically, the titrant, that's the known concentration, is added from the burette to a fixed quantity of analyte, which is the unknown concentration, in the conical flask until the reaction is complete, which you can often call an endpoint, or in the case of an acid-base titration, an equivalence point, it can also be called too. Now, you don't always have to have the titrant in the burette and the analyte in the conical flask. I mean, you can change them around. It really doesn't make any difference there. Acid-base titrations then can be divided into four different types and each type will have its own range of pH change at the end point. So here I have a graph. This is where a strong base is being added to a strong acid. On the y-axis is the pH running from 0 to 14. And on the x-axis, I have the amount of base being added to the strong acid. You can see here, this is what we call the end point or the equivalence point. It's where the pH changes from 3, as you can see, from 3 to 11 instantly at the end point. So what indicator could I use for a strong acid, strong base reaction? Well, most indicators are suitable as they have a complete color change within the pH range of 3 to 11. So you have options there. The second type of titration then is when a strong base is added to a weak acid. So we would expect then the end point to be above 7, so between 7 and 11, because we're looking at the strong base and a weaker acid. So the pH change uh, occurs between 7 to 11, and that's where our end point is. So what type of indicator could we use here? We could use phenolphthalein, a suitable indicator. It has a color change between 8.2 and 10, which falls between that range of 7 and 11. So that's for a strong base with a weak acid, the pH change occurs of 7. Now we're looking at when I have a weak base with a strong acid, so the reverse. In this case, you'll notice the pH change occurs below 7, so it changes instantly between 3 and 7 is your end point there. So what sort of suitable indicators could we have here? We could use methyl orange. It has its change from 3.1 uh, between 3.1 to 4.4, or a methyl red from 4.2 to 6.3. So we could use either of those indicators. And when it goes from an acid to a base, it goes from, I believe, red to yellow. 
Then the last one then is a titration curve for a weak base and a weak acid. So if we have a look, there's no sharp um, end point here. There's no instant change. So monitoring the pH of a weak acid and a weak base titration is actually of little value in this instance. And if we have a look at our indicators, there is no suitable indicator for this type of titration. So just to bear that in mind when you're dealing with a weak base and a weak acid. There's no instant pH change, therefore no indicator is suitable, and there's no point in monitoring the pH change. So what makes a good acid base indicator or pH indicator? Well, it has to give a complete color change at the end point. The color change must be instant. If you happen to choose the wrong indicator for a particular titration, it may give you a color change, but the results you're getting will be incorrect. You won't get the correct volume and you won't get the correct endpoint with it. So bear that in mind when you're choosing your indicator for your acid base reaction. So that brings to a close our, our piece on indicators. And thank you very much for listening.